Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. We're continuing our discussions about Turkey, have a better understanding of its role in the region and its domestic issues. Now joining us again to further this chat is Berish Karaaj. He's a lecturer in International Development Studies at Trent University, Ontario, and he joins us again. Thanks very much for joining us, Berish. My pleasure. So uh, one of the big issues Turkey is facing, and it's been going through recently, is the arrest of many senior members and other members of the military, uh, charged with treason. Some people are going to jail. So what, what is this all about? Actually, what we're witnessing in the past uh, few years is a, a change in the uh, political and economic elites uh, of the country. And uh, I, I think, uh, looking back, uh, this, this has two dimensions. The AKP government has become an increasingly repressive government, uh, trying to eliminate uh, social opposition. So the two uh, sources of social opposition to the AKP government have come from, first, the uh, secular Kemalists, and uh, many of these people are, uh, uh, have, or have been within the uh, armed forces. And the second source of social uh, opposition came from the Kurdish movement. And uh, the uh, AKP government basically used two court cases, one of them uh, being uh, Ergenekon, uh, uh, and the other one, the KC, KCK uh, court case, to silence social opposition. The, the, uh, what happened with the uh, military officers, both uh, the retired ones and those uh, in active uh, duty, is uh, what was the way the AKP government was dealing with their opposition and eliminating it. And why did the military allow this? Uh, I mean, in, you know, one has always thought that the military in Turkey are always this sort of the real power behind the throne. Uh, why did they allow this to happen? Although uh, the, those sensitivities within the armed forces when, when it comes to secularism and the uh, founding principles of the republic have always been strong. It looks like a, a part of the military uh, started to agree with the uh, social project that was being implemented by the AKP uh, government. And this also might uh, have something to do with the, the incorporation of the uh, uh, armed forces into the existing neoliberal regime through uh, their investments uh, both in Turkey and abroad uh, through something uh, through a, a holding a corporation called OYA. So this uh, holding corporation which was built in 1961 which was uh, established in 1961 uh, uh, first its uh, initial objective was to make life easier for the uh, officers in the face of economic hardships, uh, for example, if there was an economic crisis or uh, uh, you know, assist them with funds or uh, help them with their retirements, etc. But particularly uh, after the 1980 military takeover, it uh, embarked on a, a number of investments, both in Turkey and later on abroad, uh, and acting like a, a normal corporation with uh, the military uh, officers contributing, but at the same time having uh, shares. And this might have also uh, uh, helped uh, in terms of incorporating at least some uh, parts of the uh, military, the armed forces, into the existing neoliberal regime. Mm. And so the, the younger, newer, up-and-coming officers... Uh, were willing to go along with that and thus get rid of the older ones. But is it, ju is it just the older generation that's been arrested? Or? It, it is uh, mostly the uh, you know, uh, people at the upper levels of the, uh, of the command. But the, the, another thing is, of course, that we, uh, we need to pay attention to is what has been going on within the country in the last uh, uh, 10 years. So uh, the, the transformation uh, of the country based on the project that was implemented, uh, the conservative project that was implemented by the AKP. And, and, you know, and it will not be surprising to see many uh, of these uh, armed, uh, or of the officers sympathizing, especially the young ones, sympathizing 
with uh, the AKP government and its policies. Well, when, when you say then that there's been this sort of regime change, if you will, I mean, how, how profound is that in terms of the, uh, the elite of Turkey? I mean, when it comes to who owns stuff, you know, who owns the commanding heights of the Turkish economy, uh, I mean, has that changed or we're talking just at the political level here? Well, there, 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 there's both continuity and a break from the past. The continuity is uh, the continuation of the neoliberalization of the country, and uh, there's no change in that. Uh, we see a very brutal process of neoliberalization. Uh, but now, uh, when we look, look, at, look at the elite of the country, well, we have the old elite, again, big capital, uh, and they are there, and some of them, they tend to be you know, secular, uh, you know, so-called modern, etc. But now you see uh, other people joining the elite uh, whose worldview is more conservative uh, and, more, and more based on Islamic principles. So, so what is the response of the people in Turkey to all of this? Well, the response is, uh, in the last general elections, uh, about 50% of the people electorate voted for the ruling AKP government. And about 25% voted for the uh, uh, Republican People's Party, which is historically, uh, you know, which is the party of uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the uh, founder of the Turkish Republic, which is, uh, and uh, whose ideology is based on Kemalist uh, secular principles. And about 13% voted for the uh, uh, MHP, which is considered by many people uh, as a you know, right-wing, ultra-nationalist, or by some even a neo-fascist party. Uh, on the other hand, about 6% of the people voted for the independent candidates who entered the parliament uh, as independents, but uh, they're, they're members of the uh, Kurdish BDP party. And the interesting thing is that the only uh, organized voice that focuses on uh, a different social project, uh, quite different from the neoliberal social project that has been uh, introduced and promoted by the AKP government, comes from the Kurdish opposition. And that's why uh, in, in the past uh, uh, three years, there was such an assault on the Kurdish movement. Uh, for example, uh, today, uh, 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 Turkey is the leading country in terms of the number of imprisoned journals. Uh, there are 76 uh, journalists, uh, sorry, journalists in Turkish prisons, which exceeds by far uh, the, uh, the numbers in even countries like Iran and China. And 70% of these journalists uh, are Kurdish journalists. Well, uh, Turkey is a member of NATO. I guess that's why we don't hear this. Uh, well, very few people hear about these things. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Barish. And as it I was said, my pleasure. And Thank we're going to be doing more about Turkey in the coming days. And don't forget, we're in the midst of our fundraising campaign. If you give a buck, we get another buck in a matching grant until we reach 100000 And if you want to see more of the real news in 2013, we need you to click on the donate button, because if you don't, we can't do this. Mm -hmm.